Hello and welcome to the Game Show Global Esports Cup. This is going to be the second game of a two-game series between Enso and Big Red Machine in the CIS Qualifier Land. These teams are currently live in Russia, although we are your remote English coverage here on the Game Show 2 Azubu channel. As far as the first game between these two teams is concerned, Enso were able to pull back a pretty terrible early game deficit and a great turnaround from them off the back of some really well executed fights they had a uh, offlane morphling and the stuns were always on point the big red machine cores just really didn't want to build in those bkbs and it wasn't something that was really an option for them so you had a fiend script and a doom on the enemy side as well however today's a new day we'll have to see how these teams are going to adapt and also as it's a new day i'm gonna have a new co-caster with me i'm joined by llama down under and it should be a pretty good one yeah, I'm excited. I know Enzo has been having a bit of trouble in these uh, in this LAN, just because there are a lot of big CIS names uh, in the groups, and hoping to see them get another win so that they can get a bit ahead. But um, interesting. The only thing I think here is the IO ban out. Was that played last match? Was that? No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> nope. Okay. I just because when I actually no, Enzo I take that back. And Enzo so have been playing the IO pretty. Liberally, I can't remember if it was in the match that they won against Big Run Machine, but I also believe that that was the only match that they did win. Um, yeah, it, it was a Bane IO combination. You're right. So, um, yeah, they are going to give a little bit of respect to that hero in the first stage. Yeah, and um, I've seen them run some other lineups, some like uh, trying to hit various early push timing lineups and have that not work as much. So I do like seeing this Night Stalker Tusk. You know, Night Stalker, he does have that timing component where every night he wants to be effective, but I feel like he's got a lot more leeway than those very strict, you have to hit your 15, 20 minute timings and group up and push. You know, Night Stalker has the four minute night, he has then the eight minute, you know, he can do various things, or not the eight minute, the 12, yeah, so he's as the game progresses, We've seen in a lot of these games in this tournament uh, in general, where Night Stalker gets that Aghanim Scepter, and even if the Night Stalker himself isn't able to do that much, just the map control and the vision that's offered by the hero is absolutely incredible as the game scales later. But Big Red Machine now picking up the Shadow Fiend are going to have an incredibly potent late game duo. The Doom combined with the SF, it's not only a great combo for getting kills, but a lot of scaling DPS. I'm not sure if Enzo are 100% ready to deal with now, so they're going to have to look to fix that later down the line in these next couple picks. Yeah, and kind of something where it still feels like everybody's getting used to what they prioritize on the patch. I know a little bit ago we were seeing Quop being our first pickups, and right now she's a third round ban. We've got some very interesting heroes coming out here. Um, the Dazzle ban out, a little bit surprised they didn't try to pick it up themselves, just because I feel like he does combo very well with heroes who like to go ham, like Night Stalker and Tusk, and is of course a strong support. But... Um, Perhaps they just they know they're not going with the dazzle. So. Yeah, they have something else in mind. Maybe like a witch doctor also could work pretty well with and against Enzo's two heroes that they've already picked up. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. For now, Enzo have a lot of flexibility with what they're able to pick up. Although Night Stalker and Tusk tend to go on the aggressive, it's not unheard of that you pick up some sort of late game insurance and just have the Night Stalker and Tusk fight to make space for whoever that safe lane farm is going to be. They'll ban out the Earthshaker as well and then pick up the Bane for themselves. This is support that Enso as a team in particular are very partial to and in the games that they've been doing well and at least showing good performances, a lot of the time it does involve the Bane. Very effective usage of the defensive nightmares in particular and in general a pretty good hero for them. Then they pick up the Invoker. This is very very Enso. I've had uh, mixed feelings about the Invoker when I've seen them play it, but it uh, was part of the strategy when they were able to win, and they've put some very interesting um, ideas out there with their draft. A very old style uh, draft with this Bane and Invoker picks that a lot of other teams wouldn't consider snagging up, but it will be uh, interesting to see how they're going to play it. I've seen them both run with the Quas Exord and the Wex Invoker. Yeah, but Big Red Machine have already responded with the Venge. That's, you know, Venge has a number of ways to stop the Bane's ultimate. That Fiend's Grip Doom, of course, can use uh, the Mini Stun on level death or the Doom, but, you know, having the Venge is always fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, nice counter pickup there. Invoker, I'm wondering maybe how you kind of play around an Invoker. And I, a Clockwork is... An interesting pickup. I think Invoker can get off. Um, What's well, it? Ghost Walk 
while he's being a uh, battery assaulted, even oh, if yeah, he's the only sure. target. He can definitely cost that. So kind of an interesting pickup here. Yeah, Ghostwalk doesn't have a large cast time, but it does have a reasonably long fade time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Invoker should be able to reliably use that, but I'm not sure to how uh, how effectively he will be able to get away with that spell, or if that's even going to be an option early on. As yeah. it kind of feels like Enzo are going to be more inclined to pick up the er, Exord Invoker this game. When they played the Wex Invoker, although he was very active around the map and made a lot of good rotations, they fell into an issue where they just lacked the damage, and I think this game is going to be no exception. Even if they're able to take a lot of good fights, they need some way to transition to those tower pushes, and I think a Forge Spirit's Necrobook Invoker could be a reasonable way to do that. And also they have really good setup for Sun Strikes between the Tusk Snowball and the Walrus Punch uh, or the Bane's Nightmare is very reliable. It's going to be Witch Doctor Ban coming out from Enso, probably lacking one support from Big Red Machine as they'll throw the Doom Safe Lane Farming, Shadow Fiend Mid, and the Clockwork to the Offlane. So we'll have to see what that's going to be. But there is, still is a good amount of flexibility from both sides as to how they want to shuffle around these heroes. It's also really interesting that they picked the Invoker into the Doom. It's something where everybody doesn't, nobody wants to be doomed, but as an Invoker, as someone who desperately relies on costing spells, interesting to pick up, pick that into Doom, who's going to stop you. The other thing, I haven't seen a safe lane Doom be hugely successful on this patch. Um, so I'm always a little bit hesitant about whether you can make that work better than something like the AM, like the banned out Phantom Monster or so on. So The nice thing about this game is that Big Red Machine aren't all in on the Doom as a safe lane farmer. They don't need him to be their only source of damage. And even if he is their only source of damage, if you get the Alpha Wharf aura up and you have the aura coming up from Ventral Spirit, there's a lot of ways to buff up that. Uh, but the Shadow Fiend fills that core role, so to speak, and is a really good scaling DPS star. And I think if there ever was a game where a safe lane Doom could be pulled off, I think Big Red Machine have pretty much the perfect storm for it. And although it's something that I don't think you can run every game, I think this is a good game for it. Yeah. And as you mentioned, having that kind of backup, that's also why the Exhort Invoker can be nice. He can make a lot of space, be the damage, until whatever hard carry Enzo picks up, right, comes online. Um, or, actually, Spectre isn't banned out at all, which is interesting. She got some nice buffs in this past patch, and I feel like she's very strong, but against this lineup, it would be a bit scary to be a Spectre, just because Vengeful, Clock, Doom, not really going to give you much space. But, um, For sure. That could said, be an option. That said, Big Red Machine's damage to kill off a Spec requires them to have a lot of heroes present. The Clockwork by himself isn't enough, and um, or the Clockwork Venge isn't, the, their supports aren't very good at comboing up with that clock to get kills, and eh, maybe they'll fix that with this next pick, but for now Enso instead are going to pick up the Templar Assassin. Maybe a safe lane farming invoker here. The Templar Assassin versus Shadow Fiend matchup is an incredibly good one for the TA, and one that you'll see quite often. The Templar Assassin with just a raw damage advantage should be doing very well, and that'll bump Invoker into the safe lane farming role. And I think if you're going to run the invoker into the safe lane, I think you kind of do need to go for that Exhort playstyle, or at the very least pick up a Midas, can be a little bit strapped for experience if the sports don't move around. Big Red Machine, gonna pick up a Slark last. This is probably going to put the Doom in almost a pure support role. Screen is going to be handling that, and uh, maybe a dual lane with the Doom and Clock is going to arise up in that top lane for Big Red Machine. Yeah, all the roaming doom, we've seen some effectiveness with the, uh, if you, you have to get lucky on the creep, but Scorched Earth, the move speed buff just makes it so easy to just run people down. Um, I saw someone the other day, they got the Hadoken creep, and they basically just ran at the opposing mid, and you could see that the, the mid player who was on the side of the doom was like, what are you doing? You're going, you're going a little bit crazy, and the doom just ran at the mid with the Scorched Earth active throughout the Hadoken, and basically got a solo kill, and it's surprisingly powerful, especially if you haven't played against it. So I'm excited to see if that'll work, but uh, it'll be yeah, it'll be interesting, especially with the Night Stalker in the game. I feel like Night Stalker makes it harder to play the Roaming Doom just because he can counter that much more easily. Yeah, I have a feeling Enzo have quite a large window this game to where their heroes have the potential to take objectives and uh, get a lot of space done. All around, I think Enzo's lineup is more self-contained and less prone to error. Big Red and Machine need to do well in these lanes. The Shadow Fiend and Slark 
Although both can feasibly go into the jungle and farm up, and so are going to have so many heroes that can pressure them, so many heroes that can apply pressure to the enemy side of the map, that it's not going to be safe for both of them to get that extra farm steroid to come back into it. So uh, it does feel like the grid machine, and especially with this quasi support doom on screen is uh, going to be a little bit strapped for resources but if this is able to extend to a late game situation even though invoker and templar assassin are no slouches i think big red machine are going to look very comfortable with their raw man of initiation introduce the rest of her lineup following screen on that doom it's going to be tmw on the shadow fiend clockworks going offlane played by flow ventral spirit will be handled by slander last but not least slark by zxc yeah and then on enzo we have misha on that support night stalker oh actually Nausea, I believe, is on the support tusk, because Night Stalker here is going to be core. Um, we'll find out how they trade farm. Things can always change up there, just depending on who farms, but I'm pretty sure, actually, Nausea is the support player. We've got Sting on the Bane. Has been rocking this Bane a lot, as you mentioned, this tournament. Invoker on ILTW, and finally, Templar Assassin, looking like she might be safely in farming on Muriel. Mm, and the item builds for both of these heroes could very well function in either of the lanes. Going for the Wraith Man yeah. start, although usually on mid you'll pick up two branches and have the two pooled tangos. Invoker's one with the pooled regen. In this game, it really is up to end so, and I think that putting the Templar Assassin mid is a better shot at getting them an advantage during this laning stage. We'll have to see how much faith they're going to put in their Invoker. And it does look like Muriel, in fact, is going to stick around the top lane. Yeah, and then it also looks like, if you saw the pings just then, it looks like Night Stalker was like, hey, Invoker, you're mid, not top. Um, but either way, I do agree with you. I think Templar might have the better edge there, but um, maybe just preferring her could be just matchups that they're comfortable with yeah. as players. Or just Even... uh, Invoker can rotate, I think, a little bit easier if they do want ganks. So. I'm not sure Invoker is going to be rotating, but the big advantage, at least for me here, uh, with this situation, is that Invoker is going to be getting more experience. And although he's yeah. going to be applying less pressure to the Shadow Fiend than the Templar Assassin would in lane, IOTW could very well make use of those early levels. And we'll have to see how uh, his build progresses. When you go for this Exhort build, generally you're not going to be rotating yourself as much, but just contributing with those Sun Strikes. And there is potential for aggression across the map. Misha and the Tusk down towards bottom, especially if they could isolate... Um, uh, one of these supports could very easily get kills. In fact, they're partnered up with Sting, too. They're going to leave the Templar Assassin 1v1 versus the Clockwork, a matchup that Templar Assassin should be more than fine in. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Misha just running around, trying to see what she can do to irritate up screen, and... Uh... <laughs> He's got the he's got the skeletons attacking her. Either way, in this mid matchup already a really good start for Shadow Fiend. Um, he has a lot of souls. I'm yeah, kind is... of surprised here. I wasn't expecting him to do so well against the Exalt Invoker. Invoker's matchup against Shadow Fiend is pretty darn awful. Invoker doesn't have a way to push out the wave, uh, like the rays coming out from the SF, so he's always going to be pressured under his tower. And at the start of the game, Shadow Fiend Invoker's damage is close to even, which is perfect for SF. He has good animation already and can very easily contest his farm from minute zero. And once he gets an advantage, the Invoker is going to be hard pressed to pull that back through. And now he's going to rely on sitting on Quas regen to sustain himself. If he walks up any further, TMW could turn for a quick double raise and might even be able to get the kill. Cold Snap's going to be thrown on a TMW, will proc a couple of times, one raise does connect, so both of them will trade pretty evenly in that exchange, but, uh, and so it, it kind of feels like they're getting a little bit less in the mid lane, but let's see if they're able to make up for that, especially down towards bottom, as they're applying a lot of pressure towards ZXC. Yeah, luckily, they're top, and actually the Tusk is getting a ridiculous amount of farm, I'm... A little surprised at the amount he's getting, but Venge, that's kind of one of her weaknesses, right? She has a lot of great utility, has great minus armor, gives that bonus damage aura, but she's not fantastic in lane because all she has is a stun and tiny range. Um, the other thing I'm going to be interested to see, oh, it looks like they might actually cut Misha's getting some support here, but if Venge and Slot come through, they can certainly land a pounce after that magic missile. Here, oh, they actually nightmare up the Slot, what a nice play, but snowballing in, maybe not the right answer either. And finally, the Venge does go down, Misha probably going to fall as well to pay for this, and now Slark looking like he's in a little bit of trouble, but that Scorched Earth was doing quite a bit of damage, and Slark has another death pack. Can he catch Nausea? No. Too many creeps. And actually, a one for one Sting exchange, 
And so do you get the first blood, looking for the brain sap, it's gonna be a double kill for Sting. And now point blank snowball on the screen, this Doom in a bit of trouble, the body blocks are there. And now they'll get into melee range with him, another void, and he's slowed down to a crawl, this time around without that Scorched Earth. And will be right click down, a triple kill for Sting, it's Enzo, get a huge advantage down towards Vom, they will lose their Night Stalker, that's sad and all, but as you already pointed out, it's been the tough to get most of the farming priority here. And so not only get first blood, but get two kills on top of that, icing on the cake, and this Slark is not able to find any space. Slark, once he gets his level 6, will be very survivable against this combination. Shouldn't be dying, but getting to that level 6 is going to be very rocky, and even once he does, farming this lane is still going to prove to be difficult. Big Red Machine are getting punished for the fact that they have screen on this very awkward pseudo-jungle, pseudo-support doom. Yeah, he's not... Oh, he, he's actually starting to now, maybe, after he gets the rune. Not quite sure. He's going to run into Misha. It does turn to nighttime, but unfortunately, Misha is only level 2. Usually, you aim for level 3, but of course, in a tri-lane, um, that's the only unfortunate thing with the Bane getting all those kills. means that Misha wasn't involved, and I don't know if Invis Doom can do something. But it doesn't matter. They nightmared up the slog. Here comes the magic missile, but that's the snowball coming out onto Vent. And there's a Hadoken that was nice. Oh, they need a couple more auto-attacks. Slog does manage to pounce away. Now they're going to go in on Slander. Slander taking a lot of damage, and Doom's trying to burn them down with that Scorched Earth auto attacking them. He does have a lot of base damage, but Stig is content to stay there and take it. And now they're turning back around onto screen. He doesn't... Oh, oh they're, nope, they're hopping in the snowball. I thought they were going to go chill, but no, the snowball hits and they get both kills with the ice shards. Slander might be able to get a return kill with the magic missile. Emisha will finally fall, but... Wow, I really did not think this lane would be this explosive looking at it on paper. Yeah. They have a lot of potential to get those burst kills. The power of the uh, early void, especially, is something that you can't underestimate. And it's not something that Big Red Machine have either. You touched on earlier. Ventral Spirit's early presence in the lane is not that great when she's dealing with a tri lane versus tri lane scenario. When you don't have some sort of damage source afterwards, or auto attacks, or measly. And although setting up for a palance, if it is a solo offlaner, is absolutely fine with the magic missile, they just don't have the DPS mid lane. They're going to get the dive onto the Shadow Fiend. They're much needed one at that. While all of that fight was happening down the bottom lane, ILTW was soloed up by the SF. That's going to drop our kill score at 4 to 7. And so still are at a pretty big disadvantage, but that's going to help um, in this mid lane uh, that they kill off the SF. Once he comes back to this lane, he should be fine. They need to keep up the pressure and they need to make sure that they probably kill him again in the next couple minutes of this game to make sure that Night Sucker gets the most out of this early nighttime phase. Yeah, I think there is nothing wrong with just camping your or camping the opponent's mid, especially when this SF got off to such a fantastic start. He is over a thousand ahead of the Invoker. Like it's a bit, it's more than a bit troublesome. So I don't think there's anything wrong with Real just towards stop sun strike inside the cog. It's not gonna do much of anything. Is avoided by flow, but still the damage might be there. They look for the void, getting fogged a little bit. The body blocks and Night Soccer will secure the kill, and so find another one. And although their invoker is struggling quite a lot and they are giving a lot of space to this clockwork they're making up for it with their other heroes in mid lane tmw is going to turn for raises sting is not going to die because of brain sap a close call there tmw will be denied that kill but still they're camping a lot of heroes in the mid lane although not threatening to destroy him yet it looks like they're going to continue the aggression misha's picked up his urn and is going to be running into the enemy woods doom is not low at all the three points in scorched earth are going to mean that he's more than sustained but it looks like misha wants to get his hands dirty bottom lane can we talk about how this slog is eighth ninth net worth never mind they're going on slender i think misha will back out after a few auto attacks actually no they get the ice shells they don't quite block but we got a snowball in does he have enough damage certainly does with the walrus punch pounce off the mark and the shadow on uh, the dark pack is going to do a little bit of damage but not nearly enough to put nausea in the danger zone as we may say it um i, I just noticed that slog is like bottom of the net worth chart and I'm not surprised at all. This Slark has no space to farm. He's died twice in the early laning stage. And if he walks up to the creep wave, he's threatened so dangerously by the amount of damage coming out. From a Tusk that gets an early advantage. It's not something you see incredibly often. Up top. Oh, yep, Clockwork is going to be isolated. The Sunstrike will connect, but still the damage is not quite there. Muriel going to run away, turns onto screen. The Doom chasing with that Scorched Earth HP regen. However, is going to burn staying pretty low. They'll pop the refraction. Muriel standing still inside the net. Can't really do much of any anything. Muriel won't be able to run away, has meld if things got really hairy, and I believe, although they had a dust at one point, not going to happen, it's actually going to be in the other lanes that the action's happening. Misha is going to get a kill on the Shadow Fiend in mid, and Tusk is going to die down in the bottom lane. No, Tusk was mid. He was involved oh, in the see. gank. Yeah, he, 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 he almost, um, 
he almost got the kill, and then it's, it's very sad. Um, but yeah, it, it's like surprisingly action-packed. I mean, I shouldn't say surprisingly. Looking at the heroes that we have, it should this game should be a bloodbath. But um, I'm surprised Shadowfiend is managing to get so much done mid. Um, and yeah, he is transitioning it into kills, but they are occasion. They have gotten a few return kills on him. He's still way ahead of anybody else, and I am. I do worry just because TA is a hero who needs a few items before she's snowballing and just because Slark is generally considered to be a little bit of a counter to her because even if with those refractions up he steals essence shifts I believe so yeah. I could be wrong and on she that. can also burn through or he can also burn through those defensive charges pretty reasonably yeah. well but even once Slark is able to do that unless Slark has a mass amount of items and by that I mean an even amount of items can't really trade Down effectively yep they're gonna catch on Sting isolated with the clock or battery assault one auto attack from the shadow feet will end the killing spree Ooh, now nausea deep behind the tower is in a bit of trouble here sucked back by those cogs around the trees and they'll be able to get a double kill for TMW as another raise flies forward. 7 to 10 is our kill score just like that and so have given a lot of space back to the Shadow Fiend. Those two kills really seem to mean nothing in the grand scheme of this game. Yeah and I wonder I mean Shadow Fiend definitely in position to start snowballing. I wonder how effective it'll be with the underfarmed Slark, but if Slark keeps getting kill involvement like this, right, he won't be yeah. underfarmed for long. And so it's something where... He's almost a parody with the Invoker when it comes to farm after just those two kills, and oh, bottom, they're going to go with the snowball. Walrus Punch is there under the Slark. He has a pounce, he doesn't have a Shadow Dance, however, he'll get into fog a little bit, and I think he should be fine, although the Sun Strike is there and will connect. Do they have the, the ice, ice shards? shards? He's gonna throw them. Not mm. going to land, unfortunately for the dire side. The Slark will survive a while longer, but Night Stalker's coming in from the north side, and he wants to drop the Void to get this kill. They spotted him out with the ward. They know that he's here. He's going to get another pounce away. Under the Tier 2 tower, Misha will not go for the dive any further, and everybody's going to pull out. Jettafine going to get the Illusion Rune down the bottom rune spot, but now there's a Bane and a Night Stalker right around the corner. Shadowfiend is pretty survivable, but can he stand up to this amount of damage? He'll drop the Void. They're going to start trading hits, and now the Bane's here. He's going to try to run away. Temple Assassin's here with the trap. They have the Brain Sap. Sunstrike will secure the kills. Invoker's going to get blood on his lane opponent, but to do on Muriel. The Temple Assassin now needs to go on a headlong retreat, but gets pounced up by the Slark as they're getting pincered. Clockwork comes in with a hook shot, and the Cog's over on Amisha. They'll flare down. On to the other one, and the Doom will get the last hit onto the Night Soccer. Sting will be able to run out of there alive, but Big Red Machine are making good rotations. And this Slark, we talked about a while ago, that he was one of the lowest farm heroes in this game. He's sitting on about the effective items of the Templar Assassin. The only difference is the fact that Slark doesn't have a bottle. And in the grand scheme of things, that doesn't mean all that much. He's still able to have an impact with just the levels that he's being uh, offered by these kill involvements. Yeah, it's suddenly problematic at this point that Slark is getting back into it. It was something where, you know, maybe it's not as scary if just the Shadow Fiend is huge, but the Slark is not trailing as much as he used to be. Invoke is getting very close to that Midas, though, so might be able to start working on his level advantage. He's, prob he's pretty even with the Shadow Fiend right now, but if he can pull ahead significantly, not only just making his spells stronger, but putting them in a good position to take those team fights. That so. would be really useful, friends. So right now, and so are more pickoff oriented, and their heroes excel in the small skirmishes. Not to say Big Red Machine or any slashes in that respect either, but this isn't going to be a game where we see those big meteor deafening blast combos combined with like a dark seer or something like that. TMW is going to be cold stabbed in mid. They have the void down to less than half HP. They bounce in from Slark, however, they're going to turn things around on Misha, and it is daytime after all, but not for much longer. I don't think they can chase forward to get this kill onto the Night Stalker, and in the end, it's going to be a pretty even HP trade until the Templar Assassin comes in invis. She's going to drop one out attack in the TMW and then run away with the Buckler of Shadow Fiends. Pretty tanky in the. Invis Rune was spotted out by the Radiant side, so the Shadow Fiend was under no real trouble. But now Enso are going to group up and look to take a tower in mid. Something that's very common, at least for the games that I've seen Enso play, is that they like grouping up and pushing as a team very early on. Even with a lineup that doesn't necessarily suggest that. And uh, although they're not in their full five-man group, the Tusk is bottom, the Invoker's inside the woods. It looks like they are going to back off and instead look for the smoke wraparound. Bane and Night Soccer looking for the Clockwork Top. Yeah, all this farm on the Tusk has worked out quite nicely, actually. He's almost got a mech. He's going to need the Mono Boots to sustain that, just because he is a strength hero. He has the mech. But, yeah, 
He, it's flying out now, and it's gonna be. Oh, we have an engagement up in top. They corner out flow. They use the fiend's grip, and there's a sun strike to boot. Very dead clockwork. But now here comes Doom, and he is raising his hands for that Doom. But they nightmare him up. Can they take him out, or if he dooms, no, no, with the shadow fiend around, he dooms up the night stalker immediately, having trouble. But still does have the. Never mind. I was saying still has the runs passives, but doesn't help you when a missile, uh, magic missile, is coming your way. But tomorrow is slowed up. I don't know whether they can catch TMW. They do have the cold snap now, but there are four heroes there. Refraction charges are going to be burned through with the dark pack, but they put her in the snowball. Shadow Dance is used. Another sun strike hitting, but so much damage going out into all of these dire heroes. And now Nausea falls as well. Muriel is trying to find a way out. Two seconds till refraction charges gets them up, but where is the no mana for the dark pack? Actually, she's trying to stand and fight as best she can, and she falls. Slot gets out on about 17 health. Yeah, very close call there, and they're not done yet. ILTW is farming over in the sidelines, but they're going to. Not go for that, as Slark was too low on his mana pool, but now Clockwork's going to bump into this Invoker. Flo has a hookshot, has an urn, has phase boots, but with Cold Snap and with those Forge Spirits up, Clockwork is going to give Invoker White Birth, and everybody's going to run away. Big in that fight was the fact that Shadowfiend was able to get his Requiem channel off, connected onto a lot of heroes, although it's not like the super flashy right on top of your Requiem that you'll see with like Yule's combination, or with um, somebody else setting up for him. It still did a significant amount of damage, and then he lands two raises on the back of that too, and after that, Enzo were just not in a situation where they could take a fight at all, really, and the Slark is now back up to serviceable amounts of net worth, and is out farming the Templar Assassin. I'm incredibly surprised that this TA is not doing better. Her lane matchup was against a Clockwork solo, and the Clock got all of the experience he could want, although granted Muriel is doing better than the Clockwork, is not doing better than what you'd expect a safe lane TA to have at this point. They haven't been abusing the Ancients, I don't think Enzo have stacked it up once this game, and the stacks inside their own woods have also been pretty lackluster. Templar Assassin's one of those heroes that when you get an early lead is absolutely terrifying, but now Doomed Up Muriel is uh, much less threatening, going to be forced to run away. Does she have any backup from the rest of her team? But uh, it looks like it's not going to matter even though she doesn't yet. TP into the tower from the Invoker is going to repel the enemy side, and they just didn't have the appropriate lockdown to get this TA kill. It felt like screen was maybe a little bit anxious to go for that kill. Yeah, it's certainly, as you mentioned, she, she's got some disadvantages where her range isn't that great until you start leveling side blades, but still felt like she should have had a better time in lane. Clock can harass her some, but... Uh, and she, I don't know, I agree with you, it feels like she's a little underfarmed. But this also, the lack of stacks, that's what happens when you run these aggro lineups, right? Bane and Nightstalker were constantly ganking, and since they ran the aggro lane, they had no time for them just to roam their own jungles easily, so... I mean... No, in mid lane, they're going to look for the ice shards. Hasted Shadow Fiend is going to be under the tier 2 tower. Now, Nausea is completely out of position, will be ripped apart by that secondary raise. Silence onto Doom is going to last for quite a long time. That crippling fear, even with just the one value point, is quite significant, but they'll still be able to land the hookshot. Mishu will get level death, and Clockwork secures it with the battery assault. Pounds forward. ZXC is going to land on Emuriel. They have the dust on the Templar Assassin. She'll try to fight to the death, and it's going to be her own. The Slark is able to get off his Shadow Dance, and now straight into the Roshan Pit with Big Red Machine. They have one point in the, or two points down in the presence of Dark Lord as TMW picks up his level 12 and four points up in the wave. With that extra minus armor, they should be able to take down this Roshan pretty reliably, although Enzo do know what's going on, and they would be able to sun strike the pit in 10 seconds uh, once they have that invoke. And now they have vision with the ice shards. Is it enough? They're going to go on the screen looking for the walrus punch. It's not going to be lethal. They have the mech on screen, and Nausea has gone in way too deep. It feels like the Tusk has gotten way ahead of himself. They'll drop a Sun Strike inside the pit, lands on the Shadow Fiend, but Slark already has the Aegis. They've destroyed the Roshan and Big Red Machine, just like that, are in complete command of this game. Although five minutes ago it was looking close to dead even, they now have 5,000, probably more than that, if the grass update advantage and net worth and about the same in experience. Yeah, I definitely... It definitely feels like maybe some miscommunications about how uh, deep they should be going in across the team because we had the same thing in that mid tower area around here where Tusk went super deep. In his defense there, there was a haste rune he didn't know about, but he went super deep, got picked off, just meant that they were fighting this 4v5 and as they retreated, more folks died allowing that easy rush. But either way, Templar Assassin, she's got a good amount of gold stacked up on her. Um, I know a lot of folks prefer the Deso first, just so that they can clear those ancient stacks faster, but since there are no ancient stacks, she might be going the blink here. Mm. I just don't like the blink. Uh, right now, the blink dagger just doesn't offer anything. If she blinks into one of these fights, she dies. She doesn't have the burst damage to kill off even the vengeful spirit in a 
quick enough manner. So I think the Dust of First will allow her to more effectively split push, and she needs some sort of farm acceleration. Just going for the Blink Dagger is an item that suggests that you want to fight immediately, and Enzo aren't battle ready. Yeah, it's certainly come to the point in the game where early, um, early hero abilities aren't going to pay off. Why is Bane going so ham here? String trying to... Oh, sorry, Sting trying to find something, gonna find Slander, maybe there's the aggressive swap, Sting could do something if it takes so much damage from the creep wave! And I think even if Slark weren't there, maybe it would have fallen Slark getting, uh... Oh Wait, do you want to a Boker? Screen is going to jump in, but no follow-up on ILTW, he's gonna be fine, but maybe the Templar Assassin not so lucky. Flo has a Ghost Scepter and shouldn't be dying to Muriel anytime soon, the battery is all ticking with the urn charge, with the dust, Muriel is going to be solo killed by Flo as one more smack of his... Hook is going to be the death of her. Down towards bottom, the fight commences. They're going to blink forward. They get the kill onto the tusk. Doom will secure it. Nobody from the rating team has died. No, ILTW is going to be dove, but not under his tier 3 tower. They'll probably have to back off and take that tier 2 before they consider going for that invoker kill again, but still Big Red Machine are capitalizing very heavily on the fact that Enzo look to be a little bit scattered in their approach. It doesn't feel like they're playing as a team, they're going in individually, we see the Bane trying to go very aggressive, trying to get things done, and Enzo are just on different pages entirely. And that disconnect is something that Big Red Machine are abusing very well. Whenever they go for something like that, you have Vengeful Spirit, incredibly good at catching people out, Clockwork also good at punishing those positioning errors, and you have a blink on this Doom as well. The Doom support pick is working out very nicely for them. The mm, screen is 4, 3, and 6. He's been performing well, and he's found a lot of farm without now maxed out Devour. So everything's going right for Big Red Machine. I think Enzo just need to tighten up the screws a bit, and ooh, if they could find this Slark kill, that'd be really nice, but ZXC will be able to Shadow Dance away out of there, and even if they did kill him off, he still has that Aegis for about two minutes. Yeah, Slark has a nice advantage here, bonus nighttime vision, um, regardless, it's just how his hero works, so not as easy to gank as most heroes using the Night Stalker. Uh, Screen does look to be going the Aghanims, I wasn't sure if this is what he would be going on the Doom, most people say you have to go it on the Doom, but I've seen a fair number of these support Dooms just kind of ignore that, building up more utility items and auras for the- oh, okay. Um, Why are we not paused? Can we pause? I'm trying to pause. We cannot pause. Well, these creeps in mid are pushing and all the heroes are returning to their base. <laughs> there we go, there's a pause. Um, I was going to say that I am, I like the Aghanims here. You know, there are some things it's going to get, mainly I think Night Stalker, it'll just get rid of his buff at night. But it also just makes the ult stronger in general. So the I do like is staying that. inside these engagements so long that it yeah. is going to be uh, pretty much a deletion of a hero. We, we've seen a couple of these dooms not really accomplishing much of anything. His screen's just going to drop the spell. And then he can't really effectively get that kill as he doesn't have enough damage by himself. And maybe the Clockwork or the Venge is in a different vicinity. I think this game may be going for the Aura Doom, picking up a Vlad's, also holds its merits, definitely. Stacks nicely with the Venge, stacks nicely with the Pack Leader Aura in mid. They're going to look for the Pounce, not going to connect, silenced up the Slark. Needs to play a little bit more cautiously, but he doesn't really fear anything. They're going to blink forward, Cold Snap onto screen, trying to get that Doom off, will succeed on ILTW, and now the Invoker in a whole heap of trouble. Screen is very low on armor, and will go down in trade, and the Invoker's still alive, will be denied out, but still is not a part of this fight. Requiem will be unwound on the Bane, double kill for TMW as he raises down the other and just like that big red machine continues their path of aggression still it could have been worse for Enzo at least to get the deny on the invoker and get the doom kill before invoker even goes down and the gold trade and the experience trade is much closer than it would have otherwise been still big red machine do take down the tier 2 tower in mid lane for their trouble it's still advantageous for them but when Enzo are behind I think they'll take anything they can get really yeah, and they're not, they're not, uh, well, I mean, it is 21 minutes in, they're 10,000 net worth behind, but it's also one of those things where I feel Big Red Machine is itemized really well for playing this lead, right? The blink on the Slark, we see a lot of Slarks go Shadow Blade, and it's true that you can cause a lot of havoc with that, but Slark knowing that they're going to be doing these, they want to... They're wanting to push towers, and having that blink where he can suddenly be behind the opponent's tower, picking someone off, really helpful, as opposed to with, um, 
the Shadow Blade, you sometimes have to walk basically into a tower and be seen. And also just stuff like, uh, as we said, Doom going, the Blink Ags. It's all very great. Doom, although in a bit of trouble, they snowball actually onto the Slark there and the immediate swap out for Slander. Oh, that was the Clockwork. But now Doom's in here. There's going to be a Meatball dropped. I don't know if it's going to be enough. LTW goes down. Nausea is going to fall as well. And so that gank not quite working out. They almost killed off Flo, but not enough damage. And in the yeah. meantime, in mid, I don't know if Slug's going to be able to do anything, but he has TP support, so I don't think they're even going to get this tower. Slug comes in, he, oh, the nice blink away, of course, Refractions now no longer, or now stop damage instances, so you can blink, and tomorrow having a hard time with Razors, and that's it. That was his 10 second BKB. Yeah, that's oh, a they're pretty gonna, small win. Magic Missile will cancel his TP, and he's going to be brought down inside that corner. Nowhere to run, will turn for the Brain Sap, and then go down to Slark as ZXE picks up that kill. If Enzo are able to turn some of these engagements, that same itemization that's helping Big Red Machine in these fights, the mass blink daggers on Slark Doom on Shadow Fiend, could also hurt them a little bit should they get to a point where Enzo are on the same page when it comes to items. But the, the gold income just isn't there at all. Templar Assassin does, in fact, go for the blink dagger you were talking about earlier, but I think the issues I had with it still stand. It's not going to allow Muriel to fight. She's 1-4-1. One, one. This is not a happy Templar Assassin at all. She hasn't yeah. had access to any stacks. She hasn't been able to find kills, and at that point... Templar Assassin just doesn't function as a hero. She's going to try her best to split push, but now pounce in under the tier 3. So catch out, LTW. Look at the Walrus Punch onto ZXC, but that's not going to save their Invoker's life. It just feels like it's a little too little too late. If this Blink Dagger came 10 minutes ago, maybe it would have been a pretty big boon for their team, but and so just aren't getting that sort of income. And the only hero that's even kind of keeping up, uh, nobody really is. The Shadow Fiend is almost doubling up the Invoker and the TA. Might be more farm than both of them combined soon as soon as this uh, tier 3 melee barracks fall. But the um, Invoker's Midas is mostly just offering him experience, and I haven't seen those big combinations from Invoker that you'd really like to see with the maxed out Egg Sword. If he lands it, it's a mass amount of damage, but they don't have the appropriate setup for a big team fight. If they had a Magnus RP, and so holding high ground would be a lot more feasible, but right now the tier 3 tower is going to fall with hardly anything committed by Big Red Machine. They don't have to fear Enzo jumping them. If Tusk commits, this is Tusk was only a mech, and that mech Ooh. was picked up so long ago. Long swap. He's going to drop the snowball. Looks like he's going to the creep wave, and Tusk might be able to survive here. Nazi will back off to save. Yeah, but the aggressive jump in from Slog, well, I'm going to kill off Nausea most likely in that Shadow Dance. The meatball does come down, but it doesn't do very much with all the regen coming out of Slog. And now uh, Sting looking for a hold, gets a nice one off on Slander. Will they even be able to kill her though? It's a little bend, and it looks like the snowball will hit. They might be able to finally get the last hit on her, but in the meantime, Bane is picked off, Sting going down. Templar Assassin is doomed up. Muriel needing to get the hell out of there, and now Misha caught out as well. Night Stroker almost escaping with the cogs. Picking her off, the immediate buyback, Templar has gone down as well, has a buyback, has used it, um, and they're going to see if they can kill off screen, but they're taking, he's taking very little damage, now they're going on tomorrow, but even with the meld strike, he is not taking any damage, and now they're working on screen still, but Muriel's just going to probably go down again, there she goes, they managed to finally kill off Doom, Misha standing in the sidelines, Doom actually buys back, and Voka goes down, and there's her GG call. That's going to be the end of the second game, and so are going to not win the series, but they still played very well in the first game that was played, not yesterday, but the day before that, so uh, they are uh, held their own against Big Red Machine, at least in that game, but this time around, it felt like Enzo just didn't play as a unit. They went on a lot of different excursions, and the early game worked out so well for them, I thought things would turn out. Although Invoker didn't have a great time in mid, maybe if they lane swap, they put Templar Assassin in the mid lane, have Invoker as a safe lane farmer against the Clockwork, and in general just communicate a little bit better. At least that's what it looked like from a spectator's standpoint. I don't know exactly what's going on in their heads and inside their team speak, but um, hopefully they'll be able to sort out those issues. And so are a team that stick to their guns, they pick fun heroes, and they've been entertaining to watch, so love to see them down the line. Thanks for tuning in. This first game of the day, we're going to have more series in just a bit, so stick around for more of the game show Global Esports Cup Russian CIS, or, uh, CIS region uh, qualifier, rather. And uh, we'll be back. <laughs> see you then.